Hey Ratbags, it's Jade, welcome to a Dying Light 2 guide, showing you some of the early game activities to get the most parkour points. Of course, your parkour meetup will fill up every time you're doing some nifty jumping around or grabbing onto ledges, but there are some activities that reward huge amounts. You'll quickly find you're going to need thousands of XP in parkour to really guarantee you're going to level up your character properly and unlock new skill abilities. And it's another captain of his tip, but do make sure you've switched your armor and pieces over to anything that generates extra parkour XP. You can find pieces like this, and some definitely give you a lot more than others, and it can all mount up. Let's just hope they actually bring out loadouts in the future to make this a lot quicker and easier, switching between different sets. So it's well worth staying focused, just running around the map sometimes, completing some of the stuff I'm about to show you, and making sure you've got all of the equipment that generates extra parkour. And I know there are agility points, but I'm going to carry on calling on parkour. It's pretty obvious, but windmills you'll realise as soon as you start getting into the open world section after the tutorial give you the most amount of parkour points for the shortest amount of work. Trouble is, not all the windmills can you actually access. You need the right level stamina to be able to climb up to the top. There are activities that will give you more actual XP points, but in terms of quickness and ease of convenience, you can't beat 500 XP in the shortest amount of time. All you've got to do is check the requirements. It'll always tell you on the windmill, on the map screen, or when you approach one, exactly how many stamina points needed to climb it. And of course, each level up that you put into your stamina increases your level by around 20 points. So it's a balancing act, making sure that you get enough of the parkour points, but also the inhibitors, so that you can go ahead and buy and unlock some of the skills that are locked behind higher stam. There's plenty of windmills that you'll be able to access in the early stages. Once you get to level 1 and 2, there's a whole bunch that you'll be able to go ahead and climb. And obviously the other benefits are that it'll give you save points, as well as trading posts and making that area safe to be around. Another great way to get parkour points is rescuing survivors. These are absolutely seconds of your time. You just simply have to go up to one of them and give them a health item. And you normally get a health item back from them. So maybe not exactly the same thing you just give, but you will get some sort of boost to help you out. Plus, obviously, 200 and odd parkour points. And of course, you will also get combat points too. Next up, we've got military drops. These are scattered all around the obviously world and in usually harder to get places on top of some of the buildings where you're gonna have to do quite a bit of parkour. But if you do manage to get the top and open them up, you'll get a thousand XP. One you might come across in the early stages is where the bandit outpost is, one of the first times that you take one out. And it's part of the story, so you might as well wait till then. So I have found a few of these just scattered around in various places high up, but some of them are definitely tied to more structured challenges like these, where you have to really think about how to get up on top of it. But this will all become a lot easier once you get more abilities in parkour. Bottom line, if you notice this popping up on your radar or in your binoculars, go and see if you can grab it. Another way that you'll be getting parkour points is completing the parkour races. There's a whole bunch of these and there's different levels of difficulty. To get gold on some of these, you may even need certain upgrades or skills to really achieve it. So pay attention to the level that pops up on the side quest whenever you go to start one of these races, as there'd be nothing worse in running around for three and a half minutes and not even being able to get bronze. This time I chose level one option and it was definitely much shorter, you can see. And I absolutely smashed this one and managed to get gold. Only disappointing thing is you don't actually get any parkour points generated by doing parkour while doing this. And another thing to bear in mind is that a lot of these challenges, you can go and do them in whatever order you want. So it's about maybe scoping out the landscape, seeing what kind of areas you might be able to shave a few seconds off and then go revisit. All in all though, that does take a bit of time getting used to stuff. So I wouldn't say it's the easiest way to generate them. But of course, you're always guaranteed some as long as you are pretty good at parkour. Certainly revisiting areas once you've got more skills is definitely a good idea for this. And you'll be able to do these super simply. If you achieve bronze, you get around 200 in the early stages of parkour points, and gold is up to 700. So yeah, if you're at the level, give it a whirl. Another quick one, if you do happen to come across them, is bolters. These are special zombos that you can see lead a path, and you've got to follow them and get to them quickly. You get around 200 XP in the early stages, and I wouldn't say it's like the biggest amount, but again, like the survivors, rescuing them or taking care of these guys is super quick if you do manage to come across them, so don't ever pass up the opportunity not to. And they're not that challenging. And being Captain Obvious here, but like I said, you get lots of XP completing missions, especially the main quest, but you can also get a bunch from side quests. Just pay attention to the rewards whenever you get a side quest and see if it does have a big load of parkour points. 
Next up is the GRE anomalies. These task you in taking out the Reverend in a small little zone alongside other zombies. Surprisingly, even though it's more focused on combat, you can actually get a huge amount of parkour points. That's because these are nighttime events where you'll get the bonus multiplier from doing nighttime stuff. This does require a bit more work from you, and I would say, depending on your skill level, this may only take a few minutes, or it may make up to 10 if you're really, really putting it on the hardest difficulties. But jumping around the environment, using lots of parkour moves to take on the big guy, means that on the right hand side, you're quickly going to start pumping some of them numbers up. And of course, you will get some combat points with that, again, if you're using combat parkour moves. I sped the gameplay up a little bit just to highlight, but on the right hand side you can see all the combat and the parkour points, and they do start getting huge amounts. Bottom line, don't always run away from these, even if you think you're a bit underleveled, it might be worth giving it at least one go and seeing if you can get a whole bunch. I reckon I've got around 300 parkour points at least, just taking on this guy, and obviously I've got extra rewards including inhibitors and a whole bunch of rare loot, especially the rare zombie token. I'm not sure if Danger gives it an extra modifier or something as well, but yeah, it seemed to get me quite a bit more. So, you will obviously earn some points, but it's not the best way of course. That's why I've put it last, because you sometimes do need to be much higher level, and it can take a long time, like I said, depending on your skill level or what difficulty you got it on. But absolutely still worth thinking about.